It's at least possible that uh, the fear of death, the terror of your mortality is the creative force that created all of the things around us at this human civilization. Yeah, well, and, and I yeah. think about from an engineering perspective, uh, this is where I lose all of my robotics uh, colleagues, is I feel like if you want to create intelligence, you have to also engineer in some kind of echoes of this kind of fear of, uh, and not, you know, fear is such a complicated word, but kind of a, like a scarcity, uh, a scarcity of time, a scarcity of resources that creates a kind of anxiety, like deadlines get you to do stuff. Yeah. And there's something almost fundamental to that in terms of uh, human experience. Yeah, well, that's an interesting thought. So you're basically, in order to create a kind of structure that mirrors what we call consciousness. Yes. You better have that structure confront the same kinds of yes. issues and terrors so that, suff- that, that we do. Consciousness and suffering only make sense in the context of death. If you want to, f- I feel like if you want to fit into human society, if, you, if you're a robot and if you want to fit into human society, you better have the same kind of existential dread, the same kind of fear of mortality. Right. Otherwise, you're not going to fit in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it might be That's it good. might be wild, but it's at least like we're talking about all the theories that are at least worth consideration. I think that's a really powerful one, and f- definitely one has uh, resonated with me, mm. a- and um, definitely seems to capture something beautifully like real about the human condition. And I, I wonder, it's of course sucks to think that we need death to appreciate life. Um, but uh, that just may be the way it is. Well, it's interesting if this robotic or artificially intelligent system understands the world and understands the second law of thermodynamics and entropy even an artificial intelligence will realize that even if its parts are really robust, ultimately it will disintegrate. Yeah. I mean, so the time scales may be different, but in a way, when you think about it, it doesn't matter. Once you know that you are mortal in the sense that you are not eternal, the time scale hardly matters mm-hmm. because it's, it's either the whole thing or not. Because on the scales of eternity, any finite duration, however large, is effectively zero. Mm -hmm. on the scales of eternity. And so maybe it won't be so hard for an artificial system to feel that sense of mortality because it will recognize the underlying physical laws and recognize its own finitude. And then it'll be us and robots drinking beers, looking up at the stars and just, uh, you know, (laughs) uh, having a good laugh in awe of the whole thing. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good way to end it, talking about the fear of death. We started talking about the meaning of life and ended on the fear of death. Brian, it's just an incredible conversation. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. I enjoyed I it. I really, really enjoyed it. It's been a long time coming. I'm a huge fan of your work, a huge fan of your writing. Thanks Thank for talking you. today, Brian. Thank you.